There is real, real fear in the air. People are afraid of being targeted. After 9-11, people weren't just in hiding. They just hid. They were terrified. But I was like, no, not this time. My phone that very evening was ringing off the hook in text messages, people asking for answers. They all had a story to share, a relative or an employee impacted by the ban. I have my husband, who is a Yemeni national. He escaped the war in the beginning of 2015. What's going to happen to his application? Is he going to join me? He was vetted for an entire year. <laughs> and for for this man to all of a sudden like make everyone illegal, even green card holders, just really terrifying. This can't be right. You know, I'm an American, I have rights. The you know the, the sorrow and devastation that I was told about that evening made them all just say we need to find some way to make our voices heard. It all start with an idea. In Facebook, someone put out the idea. We are here, we have store. We've got power. We, we're all like 90% of grocery stores and bodegas, you know, bodegas in New York City. Zaid said to me, I have a really radical idea. So of course I braced myself and I was like, what is he about to tell me that is so radical? Let's shut down. Just shut in the store and then maybe we tie it with the protests. It sh it, I think it, it, it showed Yemenis do contribute. They have businesses. They have relationship with, with their neighbors. They're not as bad as this executive order is trying to, to show them to be. I actually got chills. I got like goosebumps. And my response to him was, this is a really great idea. Do you, do you think you guys can actually close, you know, all the bodegas across the five boroughs, that there are at least four to 6,000? Yemenis tend to stay away from such a thing. Back in the Middle East, people ran away from politics. For the last four or five decades. Many, many Americans have basically said, we're not gonna talk politics. You know, we need to just focus on what we need to do here. In hard times, there is opportunities are being born. So I think it's an opportunity to change the Yemeni American mind. And Zaid called influential business leaders to convince people to close their businesses. Well, the social media is my role. Since I have more than 15,000 um, followers, half, more than half are Yemenis in New York City, and a lot of them are bodega owners, grocery stores. We're hoping 500 people, 1,000 people, a couple hundred stores, just to say a statement. We had absolutely no idea that we were going to turn up seven, six to 7,000 people that day. Almost every area had a store or two or three uh, closed. It's a major surprise. It's a sign of, that everybody is a victim. Wow, I, you know, I get really emotional when I think about that day because it was just incredible. I will never forget elderly men there smiling. The 14 years old who, who was chanting. It's just an amazing thing. For the past two years, the Yemeni American community has been divided because of the war in Yemen. But for the first time, every Yemeni was there from every political affiliation that were at each other's throat just a week ago. And you know what? Donald Trump managed to unite them. This is a segment of our city that has been dormant and now has awoken. And so what they saw was that they were a force. This has put them on the map, it's empowered them, and now they know that they, they, can, they can influence. I think there is, the ground are laid for real change among the Yemeni American. A number of the merchants are actually talking about the establishment of a merchants association. And they've seen the Muslim ban as an opportunity to wake them up and realize that they need to have a place at the table. The Yemeni bodega shut down will certainly go down in history, not only in New York City, but the United States. Now in the Bay Area, California, a bodega strike. In DC, they're striking. There's, you know, the women's march leaders the day after we had ours. They're like, yeah, a day without women. Seeing, uh, you know, the chants, you know, refugees are welcome here, or the no wall, you know. If it wasn't for those people coming out, we would not have the guts to do so. The moment we saw what we have people with us, it made it easier. 
it's, it's an, an amazing portrait being drawn in front of me that if people rise to do what's right don't underestimate the value of anything good that you do yes we are americans you are americans america is the land of freedom and the people coming to america deserve